Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I want to show you an interesting application of object shadows in Power BI. Now I'd come across a client who was wanting to frame report objects with a bit more contrast than my typical approach of a light gray background with white objects and a little bit of spacing in between. Now I found it with the right configuration that shadows could provide some more framing, but with less intensity than just enabling the standard border function for an object. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and see how this is done. So this video will be pretty short and sweet, so to start with, let's just talk about a typical report page using more of the traditional method that I use to frame objects. Now as you can see, there is a light background framing most of the objects in here with a little bit of space going between them, and I achieve that by usually using the Format Painter and the Page Background, picking, typically for me, the lightest gray color, and then for the objects themselves, so if I come to them, go up to the View tab, turn off Lock Objects for just a second, what I actually do is I use the snap to grid, which automatically aligns objects in my report by eight pixels. So I just make sure that everything is eight pixels apart from each other and with a white object itself and a light background that just provides a nice subtle frame for everything that's not too intense. However, I had a client that wanted something a little bit more obvious than that and for a bit of extra splash of aesthetics to be put into the report. So what I did come up with as a solution is if we come over to the report with shadow page, You'll actually notice that there's not much of a difference. It's pretty subtle, but if you look at all of the objects now, clicking on this lower right chart as an example, you'll see that there's a very thin hint of a shadow behind it. Now, typically shadows will usually angle one direction or the other and are a lot more obvious, but the reason that I ended up implementing these instead of something like a traditional border, let me come over and show you by going to the format pane up here and turning off the shadow. Now, historically, a border would be something more like this, where you'd actually have a much clearer box around it. But to me, again, it was just a little too intense to put onto the page. So I would much rather have something, if I go back twice to put back on the shadow, I would much rather have something that looks closer to this, where there is a bit of a line that actually is framing it, but it's softer and a bit more diffuse than just an actual black border going around everything. Now the way I achieved that, if we come over to here to the settings and go to the shadow options, I actually started from a preset called center. So I started from here because what that does is it actually puts the shadow centered behind all of it. So all edges get the same amount of shadow that gets pushed out from it. But that's too much shadow for me to push across all the objects. I wanted something closer and smaller. So coming back to the format pane again here, and I changed it from center, which I start with to basically snap everything to the middle. Then I go to custom. And then down here, I just tweaked a couple of settings. I dropped the size down to one. I dropped the blur from 15 to three. And as you can see, it gets smaller and smaller around the frame. If I actually even put that at two, even smaller. So I do like a little bit of blur. It just helps diffuse it a teeny bit. But with a pixel size of one and a blur of three pixels, it creates an overall four pixel width of just a very small box or frame that goes around it. And to me, it's something that does meet those requirements for the client. It's an interesting way to use a shadow, but still serves those business needs that they had of something that was just more obvious than simply the gray background. And hopefully this is something that you can potentially use in the reports that you build. Like I said, I use shadows occasionally, but I don't like them to be too obvious or intense, and I try to avoid too strong of a 3D output. So this is something that I found was kind of a happy medium between adding a border, but having something that was not quite as intense as an actual black border that would typically be around it before we actually had the ability to use shadows. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.